Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Um, we'll be starting today with a good discussion on the next set of rankings. And we'll have uh, Supa and Low Power here. And we'll also have a special guest on later tonight, Zach, um, Zach Baum from Hevolv Gaming. He is the CEO and leader from uh, from the organization that recently sponsors Antetsu and Marbles from the 64 community. And it's so wonderful to have them on later tonight. Uh, they'll be on after we discuss the rankings and we'll, they'll uh, introduce themselves and maybe we'll uh, chat and exchange some questions just to give a, a more familiar face and to this organization. Um, it's, it's such a good experience to have them on and uh, just build a little more trust with the community. So uh, big thanks to Zach for um, guest starring on the show. So we're going to start with the rankings soon. I'm going to have a Supa. And uh, let me see, I think. All right, so we're going to have low power and Supa here. We're going to talk about the rankings. Um, so this this set today is, is really exciting. All these players are really, really close. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad we're starting right now. So one second. Um, there you go, low and Supa. I think you guys' mics are muted. Yeah, oh, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? Um, welcome, man. Are right, you getting, getting enough Pulling sleep up. today? <laughs> yeah. All right, that's Pulling good. Pulling up the rankings now. All right, good. Um, I have the, I have the site up. I'm gonna bring it up. So we got number five through fourteen today, and uh, literally these guys are. Close, closer than any of the other sets of uh, of before, which is particularly interesting. And like, like I said, like um, the bios get longer and longer, so which is nice. I, I like how it paints a a picture of who these guys are. Yeah, for sure. And I know Shears probably wrote some. I think. Oh yeah, so yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, yeah, he wrote one for Prince. Oh, that's and good. For Carabo. Uh, so, let me see here. All right, so we're gonna get started with uh, Stranded today, and he he got a rating of eight point five. He's sitting at the rank of fourteen, and he uh, is from the New York's uh, New York region, and he mains Pikachu and Captain Falcon, most notably for his Falcon though, uh, and his tech skill known as the best player and in terms of tech skill in the world um as of now but he uh he usually posts some videos on his twitter definitely go check out his twitter if you want um he definitely has some really cool videos and uh what, what do you think of a strain as a player low um i never really watched too much of stranded playing mm -hmm. so maybe you could shed more light on stranded yeah so yeah I've known Stranded uh, maybe towards the end of the year. I got to know him more. Really a uh, nice guy. And I think his online persona is a little different than what he portrays in real life. Um, but he his his skill is, is really is really something. Uh, getting those ledge cancels all the time and on Dreamland. And uh, it's, it's just so technical. Um, it's, it's really cool to see. And... I don't think I'll be able to reach that, uh, but uh, he was playing some really good matches in 2016, and uh, I think I have the wins here. He was at here. He was at uh, Genesis three. He got ninth at Genesis three, uh, ninth at Super Smash Con, and then fourth at ODS two. Um, uh, one tournament that wasn't really included for the panelists was apex apex is um one of the tournaments that was i think they conflicted dates with snosa and so that so apex turned more into a regional since most of the top players went to snosa um right so apex had a lot of regional players um some really good players like fire blaster cobra star king nta uh, we had some new york city players like dfx and zeppelin um and then and then obviously stranded and Stranded was expected to uh, win the uh, win the tournament, which he did. He placed number one at 
Apex 2016, winning over Star King twice, and also Fire Blaster twice. Uh, so he didn't lose to anyone. He, I don't think, no one took a set off him. So uh, really impressive. Just like, it, it, I think it's good that he's he's consistent uh, in that aspect. Uh, so he's not losing to uh, anyone that he's um, that could be like a surprise or something. So. So that's yeah, good. Sure. He's only losing to people that are ahead of him. Right. So like right. at Genesis really 3, he really lost to like really Mariguas and Isaiah, for example. Right. Uh, and then um, he won against like Hero Pie, Kyle Tree, Court, Preston, and Ditto. And then at Super Smash Con, he lost to uh, Wingera and Revan. And then wins against Court again. Wins against Jaime, Bonze, Master Han Job, Z Rex, and Shish Kebabs. <laughs> uh, Shish Kebabs. And, and then he like kind of doesn't really attend any more tournaments till ODS2, where he wins against Blonde Kid, Jaime again, Tacos, and Bark Sanchez, and then loses to Kuro and Dexter. Um, and that I think oh that game against the set against Tacos he actually makes him drop the set in the first second game. I think he makes him drop uh, the set in the second game. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, well, if you guys didn't watch the Tacos stranded match, um, what happened was, uh, stranded won the first game and then three stocks in the second game, uh, Tacos. Uh, unplugs on controller and then leaves giving the automatic win to stranded so that was a bit of a surprise um, and stranded moved on in the bracket uh, but otherwise when I was looking over those wins and losses though those weren't all too bad um, he was what do you think about wins like that wins where the opponent kind of just gives up do you think it has more so to do with the, the person that that wins playing well or do you think it's just taco playing playing off um i think it's i think it's the winning player when when you do that to someone i think you're getting into their head and that's that's really good on uh like in, in like that mind battle like so the winning player definitely had that advantage so stranded must have been playing super well or or doing something that maybe have ca like caused tacos to recognize his mistake or something and tacos is like uh just uh, quitted because he, he just don't want to deal with it um but other otherwise i think tacos um he tweeted it right after the event he was taking a break um so he took that as a really really hard loss so um it could be something before the tournament or or that that loss uh, I'm not really sure, but I, like uh, to, to answer your question, uh, I think it's the winning player. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, it, it's those mind games, man. It's those mind games. I used to play. I used to play tennis, and uh, if you, um, I mean, you both can be good, but like in the end, uh, it's all about the mind games. Like where you're gonna put the ball. Um, at, when, when you serve, when you serve the ball at the beginning of the point, like where are you going to hit it? The other point is like preparing for it. And you can do so many types of, um, uh, like, uh, techniques or types of hits and it, you really throw them off. And, um, I think like the mind games is so important in Smash 64, especially since it's such a spacey game. Yeah, for sure. Um. You want to move on to the next, the next player? Yeah, one second. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, my mic was not working for a minute. I hope I didn't miss. Oh, hey, Actually, Super, I'll, how are you doing? I'll, man? I'll like, I'll chime in about one thing that I can uh, mention about Stranded. When I was that Super Boomed, and I was playing on stream versus Oval Light, like, as soon as I got off, Stranded came, like walked up to me. He's like, "Oh, so you're pretty good, huh?" And I was, and I was like, uh, "I don't know." And he was like, he's like, come on, let's go play. He's like, he's like, he's like, um, let's go play. Uh, so we played a few friendlies or whatever. I ain't gonna lie, I was beating him. And then he's like, he's like, yo, so you're pretty good. Like, where you been this whole time? And I was just like online. And then I was like, yo, why aren't you, why aren't you enter the tournament? Like, I see you at all these tournaments, but you never entered. 
he was like, oh, my controller's broken. So so maybe that's why Stranded hasn't been entering some of these tournaments. Maybe he's just has, having, like, controller problems or whatever. And, yeah, that's just something to say I wanted to give on Stranded. I guess he, he's not as mean as he might come off online because he was, like, really nice to me in person. Yeah, funny, funny enough, I thought you were going to, like, turn this into, like, yo, he, like, was trying to bully you and he, like, fucking beat you and they like ha yeah you suck stick down line kid but no it turns out he uh, nah, nah, nah. turned out to be a nice was, kid, but... yeah he was nice we only played like three games though and his controller was broken so it's not like the wins mean anything but just something cool to say i guess i think his online persona gives off that vibe that like he's um like uh, people think uh, he's like unapproachable or something like that um but in reality, like him and him, him and Kiro are really nice guys. Uh, yeah, I guess he's just trolling when it comes to online. Yeah, that's um, the, that's the word I'm looking for, just trolling. Um, yeah. That people might take it the wrong way. But when when I when I'm talking with him or playing with him, yeah, he's he's just a nice dude, just a cool dude. I I feel like that's that's the same thing with a lot of players in this community. Their their online persona is way different from how they act in real life. Because most people who play. Six I wish it wasn't like that, but I guess it doesn't matter too much once you actually go to tournaments. Yeah, at but the end of the day, we're all, we're all human. <laughs> for a person that like, if you go to like one or two tournaments a year and you're mostly just talking to people online, it can get a bit annoying. But it's whatever, I guess. Yeah. So I'm going to move on to the next player. We got uh, Prince, who's the Japanese Yoshi who came to Super Smash Con. He got a 8.7 rating, and he he plays Yoshi. And as we all know, he, he plays all the characters and um, does a lot of the combo videos and won the combo contest at Super Smash Con. Uh, he placed ninth um, at Super Smash Con, beating Bono Bono. And um, but not beating Wangara or Kuraba, um, but it was a surprise. Like like we said in last night, um, we didn't expect uh, Prince or Kuraba to get such high placings like uh, Bono Bono. Um, so he he definitely showed his showed his stuff at Super Smash Con. I, I am a I am a big fan of Prince. <laughs> Let's just say that like, for um, the combos for the combos or well, no his no play style. Like, his play like as a player like i've told people this many times but i was lucky enough to like play like two hours of friendlies with prince and he just like he's he's it's stupid like he's so far ahead in some regard of like his certain like the way he plays with every character it was stupid it was like learning shit that i didn't think i would ever learn i can't i can't even remember some but it was just like he played almost every character for me and um I never, I didn't get beat badly. Some of them. Here some of them. <laughs> like, when, when I, I played took some friendlies. No, no, not really. <laughs> no, I did take some friendlies. So. <laughs> but I don't really count that as it. Anyways, big big fan of Prince. He's like, if you think that like Z's like, how, how do I put this? like we we know Z right? And I'm sure he's gonna be, we're gonna talk about him soon because he's on this ranking. Like he's like he's not like you know technical, but he like his his gameplay, his style is very different. The way he plays his characters are very different. You can see it in the way he um I'm I'm pretty sure people remember this, but like the egg he used, like he was edge guarding Mariguas, like used egg to fucking spike Mariguas. Like, who does that? And then like the fucking um he would parry someone and then grab them. He would, like parry and then grab them with Yoshi's grab. Who, which his grab is supposed to be terrible. Like what other player does that? Nobody but Prince. Nobody but Prince. He did bring some unique um strategies, just like like you were saying that egg edge guard. Uh that was uh, I I've, I've never seen that before or never seen it successfully done before on stream um so and, and there was some like some other stuff uh, if we i think during the match when he was trying to do uh, some follow-ups uh, he would mess up because in the japanese version yoshi gets a perfect 
the perfect land on on the platforms. Um, so you can do some different setups. And uh, I saw that a couple of times with all of them, not just Prince, that they're trying to do some some combos, but then they forget like, oh, this is the USA version. It's not going to work. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, Prince is definitely one of the guys that I love to watch. I really bring some, uh, you know, different different things to the scene. He's, um, he's not, he's not like Fox technical. If that makes sense, I hope you guys understand what I mean. But if you like watch him, nobody else plays like he does with the characters that he is, he is showing me, and it's just incredible. So I'm gonna go over his wins uh, really quickly. We got, so that's Super Smash Con. He won against uh, Alvin. So one of the one of the biggest bigger upsets at Super Smash Con. Club of Dubba, uh, one of the Virginia Pikachu's zero uh, Satan or his name is DeBear, actually. He registered in Super Smash Con as Satan. And uh, Maniac 379 Kapsui, and then he loses to Wizrobe and Mariguas. Uh, so that win against Alvin uh, was huge, in my opinion. Uh, it, his his his, his, set, his set against Marie was, was not like a blowout by any means. I think Prince was it was it close? I can't. It was remember. it was a close game. Yeah, it was not a blowout by any means. I think I think Prince is very deserving of the spot. He right. Had. That that they win over out. Alvin really boosted him up, though. Yeah, for sure. Um, that carried him all the way to this to this rank. Um, his his other his other wins are really good too, uh, like Club Adaba zero, um, and then uh, Tiberi. I think he's one of the lower ranked players, but still ranked. Um, and um, did Wizrobe defeat all the Yoshi's? Do you know? If, um, yeah, I want to take a look at Wizrobe actually before. Yes, he did. He beat the Yoshi's. He yeah, he Karaba beat and Prince. Karaba and Prince. Yeah, that just goes to show how good like Wizzy is in the Ditto. Yeah. Now I he's wonder how we will Karaba's, do. In a... Yeah, go ahead. He's be uh, he's beating Karaba's Yoshi. He's beating Prince's Yoshi. He's beating Z's Yoshi, and he's beating Fire Blaster's Yoshi. Like, there's not a Yoshi that can contest Wizzy right now. Just kind of cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. That's crazy. So it's really funny how. Uh... There's uh, there's a lot of Yoshi's <laughs> in in the top uh, range right now. You have Tacos, Prince, Karaba, um, Wizzy. There's like five Yoshi's in the t in this, these rankings. So really interesting to talk it's about. Kinda, um, it's kind of weird how Karaba kind of goes under the radar. I guess because he didn't like attend the... Well, he didn't partake in the combo contest, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And, um, but he actually did better, like, better than Prince, according to the rankings. Yeah, he also did really good at the, the Japan Smash Cup. It's almost funny, it's like, we were hyping up Bono Bono, who we did talk about before, and then it turns out, no, Karaba's, it's like their names were accidentally switched somehow. It's like, Bono Bono's just like, you know, the, the kind of good yo. Karaba is like the actual good Yoshi. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, All right. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, so since we're talking about the print, the uh, Japanese Yoshis, let's move on to Karaba. Uh, he got an 8.84 rating, um, beating Prince by just, you know, fractions of a point. And uh, he's from Japan and one of the Yoshis. He plays seventh Super Smash Con. And uh, I'm just going to read off his, his wins. He uh, got win over Kiro, Alvin, Bark, DFX, uh, YRN, Changed Man, and then loses to Wizzy and Wangara. Uh, so Kiro and Alvin, huge wins. Bark Sanchez, a really good win. And um, I, I, I don't think a lot of people expected for him to win against Kiro, both Kiro and Alvin. Uh, especially. Yeah, especially versus Alvin. I don't think anyone expected that. Oh, no. Um, but for Kiro as well, like it says in the in the blurb, Kiro never lost to a Yoshi. So Karaba beating uh, Kiro is definitely good. 
I mean, yeah, Kira lost to Wizrobe now, but before that, Kira's never lost. Right, he he beat Wizzy at at G three. Right, I think he's also beaten him before that too, because like uh, yeah, Kira's definitely like no slouch versus Yoshi. He knows exactly what to do. Yeah. Um, as Super, you have any thoughts on uh, Karaba before we move on to the next one? Um, I had general thoughts about. So I did mention about how we have like five Yoshis. Like this, I think it'd be really interesting to talk about how their play style differs, just as um, as we go on about it. So we have Prince, and I know I'm I'm going. So we have Prince who like is again. I don't I don't really want to call him technically. It's just like the way he plays. It's like different. Certain things that he his meta, his meta is very good. And then we have Karaba who doesn't really stand out in terms of like a seemingly um different yoshi um i do want to mention i don't remember who it was but i was i was at smash con and tears pulled like you know he grabbed me he's like hey look, look at this yoshi look what, what he's doing this is what japanese do um what he did he would do like um a double jump cancel to grab the ledge i think that might have been bono bono but watched Karaba. Karaba didn't really have like anything that like made him stand out in terms of like you know play style. Like, I agree. If you like put yeah you put like Wizzy Prince and Karaba in the same room, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to um tell the difference outside of uh Prince. And I'm not saying that Wizzy and Karaba play the same. I'm just saying that they play a very strong fundamental Yoshi. It's just a very strong fundamental Japanese Yoshi who came to show that he has what it takes. Yeah, he definitely showed what he had. Oh, go ahead. I'd be able to tell. The one that's wizard was the one that's in the corner back, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. No, if I if I don't like, if I if there was no camera, and if I see that happening, yeah, it, it's definitely Wizzy. <laughs> it, it's definitely Wizzy. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, so we're, we're going to 11th for Trig the Z. Sponsored by SSB Montreal. He got a rating of 8.86. And his characters are Pikachu and Fox. And but most he's he's also known to have to be very, very good with all of it all the cast. Um, he went to four majors in 2016. G three where he placed ninth. Gommel, where he placed a, a real impressive second. And when Super Smash Con got fifth and Super Wound fifth. So I, as we go on the year he he gets um he gets some really good wins and, and starts to become more consistent. Um, just want to say that I thought Tri I thought uh, Z was gonna be like eighth. Honestly, like, it really not that his placement's good. But, like I really thought he was gonna be up there because Z has had like a pretty had a pretty good twenty sixteen. Even then, like people still I remember people th still thinking that Z underperformed, even though his placements are as good as they were. And Z felt it himself. Like I, I remember he went all Fox at Super Boomed, and how pissed he was because he didn't, you know, he didn't play, he didn't play Pikachu, and he was like, you know, life, life lesson, just always pick Pikachu. So, I, I really expected him to be higher up. Who was above him? Dexter and Tacos. Hmm. So yeah, right. um, I'm gonna go over his wins. So when I'm just gonna. Take a look at his wins as at Gomo especially, um, where he got second, and the Z won against Nintendo, Revan twice, Derek, and Kiro, and um, two other players I wore in Turtle Power, and then loses to Boom twice. Um, so Revan twice, and then Kiro, and then with that huge comeback on Derek. That, that was that was huge. That, that yeah, really... Gamel, Gamel's, his Gamel performance was really impressive. Yes. Like, say compared to, like, his G3. Like, his G3, he got ninth. And his wins, he beat Revan, who he normally always beats. And he beat Court. And then he loses to Kiro and Tacos, two players that are, you know, thought to be around his level. So, G3, not too great, but Gamel was amazing. When I was talking to... um. Kiro and I, 
I talked to him at Gommel, and right before um, his match with Trig the Z, I asked him, hey, "What do you think about what do you, what do you think about the Z?" And he's like, "Oh, I can beat him. I beat him before, and I he has I, I have a mind block on him, he, and he, he just can't he just can't beat me. Like I I have the I have the dominating mind game um, in that set, uh, and so when he played and the Z won, yeah, that was that that was a quick You're turnaround. Talking about Kiro, right? Yeah, I'm talking about Kiro. I'm talking about Kiro. Kiro said he had a mind block um, uh, on uh, on on the Z, um, and that's why the Z couldn't beat him. So like Kiro yeah, respected yeah, that he was a really like good player. Whole... It's like the whole meme where Kiro said that he'll never lose to someone he's beaten before. <laughs> and then, like, one by one, Kiro, you know, he lost to Z, he lost to Tacos. Right. Um, when um, Kiro's always going to be a meme. <laughs> I, I think he's always going to be a meme. So he did, so his got, get on my level tournaments, that I think that was his most impressive tournament. Out of all of these, so out of G3, Super Smash Con, and Super Boomed. Uh, I wish you could make it to more tournaments, though, in 2017. Uh, especially with, I, w yeah. I want to see more team love with Tacos. Z Which I does think... have kind of um, a Go bad ahead. loss. For, for his level, Fyro is a bad loss, in my opinion. Um, everyone knows that Fyro is great. I guess you contribute that fact. That's the fact that uh, Z went Fox, so it's not like it was his true main. I mean, people will say that Fox is his true main, but everyone knows that Z's best character is Pikachu. So, something to consider. All right. That's super. But you have any final thoughts on the uh, on on Z? Um. Uh. Nothing outside of um my my personal experience. Do you think that him should be ranking uh, ranked eighth? Um, no, I was just gonna comment how Z is Z is the type of player who actually has been around for quite a while. He used to be known as Zenuer back in the day, and he's always been known to be a very flashy player, a very flashy Falcon at that. So to see him still continue to because he took a break, I think for like three years or something, and. He just randomly posted on Smashboards and said, hey, I'm back, I'm playing again. And to see him get to the level he has while taking a break, still be as dominant and flashy is very impressive. Um, I don't think there's anyone who can tell you they don't like watching Z. Like, he just, like, he's so fun to watch. Almost every character he plays just, like, goes balls out. And I remember someone confronting him about that and he just like he's so talented that he he doesn't like think about combos he just does it he just literally does it something pops in his head it's like oh i'm gonna do uh you know a uh, fastball back air to fucking reverse forward air and it's something crazy and he didn't plan it out he just did it because he's that talented so if Z, I think where Z has his downfalls though is that it can be it can be stapled in like just that he is sometimes a bit too aggressive, he is sometimes a bit too flashy. Sometimes he just does go for the flash instead of going for the kill. And I I don't think that will ever change though with Z because I don't think he likes playing like that. So I'm not sure if he he's a great player. He can of course he he has the mentality to do better. Just um. Just don't, just don't know. I mean, we'll I'm see sure in 2017. He, um, yeah, we'll see in 2017. I don't think he's gonna falter. I'm not saying like I, I think Z's just gonna like you know, just gonna get out camped or you know these these more patient players just gonna run through him because that's not true. I just think that Z is a wild card in the sense like you never know if Z can do really fucking well. He's gonna bust her out. Or you know whatever he always he always feels he underperforms so we'll see. Oh, it's a, it's been a good year for Z overall compared to you know 2015. Yeah, definitely. So I want to move on to the next one at number ten, and we got Kiro Kiro Kuropi. He had a rating of 8.86 from the New York region. 
He got Pika and Kirby uh, as his main characters. He, he, I think he mostly played Pikachu in 2016. Um, I think we're getting the Kirby from 2015, like at Super Smash Con. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure he played Pikachu most of the time. So he played Genesis 3. Uh, he got fifth there. He got third at Pound, Gommel, and ODS 2. Fifth at Snosa 2. Ninth at Super Smash Con. And second at Boss Battle 2. So a pretty good resume there. And uh, I wanna I wanna say something about his Genesis three, um, which I think was his most outstanding performance out of all those other tournaments. I wanna read off some of his wins there. He uh, won against LD, Wizzy, Trick the Z, Dark Horse, JR, and Rom, and then loses to Mariguas and Wangera. So Definitely those Wizzy, that LD win, and that Trick the Z win, those are really good wins, especially against Wizzy. Um, I think I think that's his most impressive performance. And uh, but his loss. Um, go ahead. What do you guys think about Kiro being behind Dexter and Tacos? Do you think it's correct? Um, honestly. I think Ta I think Tacos and Dexter are great players, but I think that you know Kira Kira was al it always seemed like Kira was just like one step away from like um you know finally like winning a tournament and not in the sense that like I think um he could because he because he always just run into like a roadblock of like Mariguas or boom I I don't remember I don't remember ever um Tacos and Kira being a Viatala matchup in the sense that, like, I feel like Kiro struggled with it. I feel like Kiro could barely, very easily beat Tacos, but also Tacos could very e easily beat Kiro. But in terms of, like, also placements and whatnot, I think, um, well, Tacos did have, Tacos did also, he also seemed like he, he just constantly, like, was just one away from winning, and then, of course, boom, just, like, you know, boom grand. Haha, go DK. Yeah, double eliminated. Yeah. Yeah. Double eliminated, go DK, haha. So here's how I'd put it. I'd say give Taco the edge. I think Tacos can be eighth, but swap Dexter and Kiro. Because I, I know Dexter had a great, you know, great breakout ODS. performance. He had a great ODS too. He, he had some great wins, but overall, if you look at like the numbers, I think Kiro had like the more consistent. Yeah, and is Dexter um, the first person. Um, sorry to cut you off. Is Dexter the first person to take Boom to Game Five, or has Marie Guas done that before? I think Marie Guas did that at Super Smash Con. Mm. So Marie Guas and Dexter both did that. They're they're like literally point two away, so I'm not gonna complain too much. It's like eight point eight six to eight point eight. Yeah, 8, 8, I think so. Kiro. I agree with you. I think Kiro should be ahead of Dexter. Um, Dexter obviously, you know, beat Kiro at ODS after, you know, he lost the boom in winner's finals, game five. But I think Kiro overall had a better year. Um, I would put Tacos above Kiro though, just because... I agree. I think, let me see. Tacos, Tacos beat Kiro three times this year. Yeah. Double eliminated Kiro yep. at pound. So I would put Tacos above him. Um, I think it'd be still really close, though, because Tacos did lose to Stranded, and Tacos lost to Court, which Kiro's being both of them. Right. Yeah, yeah they're very close. Um, I, I do agree with you both that Dexter and Kiro should be switched, but then again, they're, like, so close in, in their ratings. Um, so it, it looked like Dexter's most impressive win in, in 2016 was probably Kiro. Um, De Dexter won... Uh, against Bonze, Shears, and Y Bomb at G3. He won against Zero, Norwal, Star King, and, and uh, Yu Supa at Super Smash Con. He won against Jaime, Nier, Hipster, and um, Jason at Pound. No, no, at Snosa 2. And then at ODS 2, he just wins against Kyle Tree, Revan, 
uh, Derek Strand and Kirk Wopi. Actually, scratch that. I think Revan his most impressive win. Um, uh, yeah, one thing I do want to add, um, real quick. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Were you were you finished reading that off? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, I think Revan and Kiro are his most impressive wins. But uh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to add that I do think that Wizrobe should actually be lower in the rankings than Kiro. So. Me personally, I would have put Hero. I would have put Wizzy at um, ten and bumped Hero up one. The reason oh, being is that Wizrobe. Well, I would I would say that Wizrobe is better now because you know Wizrobe beat him at Smash Conference sixty nine pretty convincingly. Um, but if we're only talking about two thousand sixteen, I think Hero had a better year. Hero beat him. Let me see. Hero beat him at G three. Hero beat him at Gamel. And then Wizard also lost to Revan at Pound, and he lost to Revan at Gamel as well. Hmm. So I think losing to, you know, having a losing record to both Revan and Hero definitely hurt Wizard. People can say that, oh, it's, it's Kirby for Revan, so it's a bad matchup, but I don't see Wizard dropping that to anybody besides Boom in 2017, so I don't think that's a valid excuse. Um, and I also think that Wizrobe got a free. I know people are going to say, oh, he beat him, so it doesn't matter, but I think Wizrobe got a free road to the Grand Finals at, um, what was it, SmashCon, where Isaiah pulled out Luigi. That was fun. That was, was that was so good. <laughs> like, I... I... Yeah, it's- that was so fun to watch, dude. I was like in the stands watching that happen. Like everybody was losing. Yeah, it was a, it was amazing to watch. I just don't, I don't know how much we should value a win over Isaiah like that. Um, but yeah, I would put Wizard, I would put Wizard uh, lower than Hero. I think. Um, so I, I mentioned how like you know Z has like innate talent. He's just like just this person who has raw talent wizzy i think is more of a you know trainer type where he like you can see it in the fact that um he used to struggle in the kirby matchup and then did he did he play d10 at smash or smash conference yeah he did he did he did did. yeah he he only took one game You, you can see how like Wizzy just has this mentality to just keep on improving yeah keep getting better you can even see it in melee like, he used to be, I think he was, like, 25th last year in Melee. Not trying to mention it too much, but now he's, like, top 12. Like, Wizzy's work yeah, ethic definitely. is, like, unparalleled. He's just constantly improving. He, right, let, let's see. move on with um, with Dexter. Um, and then we can talk about Wizzy uh, when he's up. Um, so, Dexter, we, we, we had her kind of mixed in with Kiro. Um, we kind of wanted to switch them both. So Dexter, he got a rating of 8.88, and like you mentioned, Supa, it's just fractions of fractions of a point um, that they're the, the difference between them. Um, so he plays ninth at G3, fifth at Snosa 2, uh, ninth at Super Smash Con, then second at ODS 2. So he had a pretty great year. Um, didn't attend that many, but obviously placing placing pretty well at these tournaments and winning against players that he's he's expected to. Um, but like like we were saying, and uh, his wins aren't that as impressive like as uh, as Kiro, um, and so they maybe should have been switched. Um, but then again, they're like their ratings are so close, so close. Like, um, but final thoughts on Dexter? Mm. We should talk a little bit about Dexter versus Wangara to make top at eight. Super Smash Con. Yeah, that was insane. I think that was like one of my favorite sets like ever to watch. That was crazy. I was watching um him like run away after he hit Dexter. Yeah. It, was, it was so so I when when I, I watched that um he his eyes were like blew up and he was just like you could tell he was like super nervous and ran right after uh when Garrett gets that near oh he, he was just like I gotta get him I gotta get him you know it's just that was so exciting. One of the one, one, one literally stole it from him. He, oh my god, he just ran away from Dexter. He just got one <laughs> little hit. 
any fucking rant. <laughs> it was so crazy to watch. I was there live. Like, everybody was losing their shit. That oh. just goes to show, like, a timeout here or there is not bad for the game. Oh, yeah. It just, it all depends on what's on the line. You know, going for top eight, I think people don't mind seeing a timeout and they actually kind of want it. Right. And, um, yeah, that, like, you know, timeouts, sometimes going to be really hype. Um, yeah, like, uh, for example, uh, Kiro versus Wizzy on the second second game, I believe. Um, that we had that timeout um, at the end, and then uh, Wizzy gets that last back air, and it was, it was just crazy. Yeah, Bongera versus Boom, too. Oh, what man. Game one, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> when Gara when just, you know, it just floats away. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was really good. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next one then, since we um, pretty much done with that. Um, man, that bio is huge. I love these bios. If you guys, uh, if you guys are looking at the ratings, um, definitely take a look at the bios. They really, really paint a good picture of each player. Uh, oh, so I I'm, just want to um, go sorry. ahead. I want to just say one more thing about Dexter. At ODS for game one versus Kiro, Kiro five stock Dexter, and then Dexter came back to just obliterate Kiro and go back to grand finals. I think that's something crazy, and uh, people should definitely watch that set ODS too. Dexter versus Kiro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to move on to, uh, yep, Tacos at number eight with a rating of 8.88. Uh, he's from uh, he's from Mexico, but he moved to Texas. Uh, he plays Yoshi, and he got seventh at G3, second at Pound, Snowsy 2, and Shine, uh, 17th at Super Smash Con, and ninth at ODS2. Uh, but he dropped, uh, like we were saying, he dropped after after one loss in that stranded set. Um, so Takas is definitely one of those really impressive players. Um, not sure what, what happened at ODS2, and Strange got a little bit into his mind uh, that caused him to drop out. Um, but he's going to be coming back for G4, and I saw a couple tweets from him, and he was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm practicing. I want to do some streams, and I'm just pumped after after watching. Um, there's a there's a tournament he was watching. I think it was Don't Park in the Grass, and he was he was hyped up to go to G4. So I, I really want to see how Tagus will do at G4. Yeah, I, re I really hope he does well because um, Tacos Yoshi, he. Do you remember that one combo he did at Shine? And like stranded confident, like he never seen some <laughs> combo like that. Yeah, I, re that I remember that. It was fucking crazy. That... Tacos have always had really good Yoshi, who is like just some combo king. He's, he's definitely not a Wizzy. He's definitely not a Wizzy. Um, I, Clubba told me, um, Clubba Dubba told me, one of the Virginia players, he, he was telling me, Every Yoshi is different. What do you guys think about that statement? I agree. I think, um, yeah, I definitely agree. Every Yoshi is different. You, you, you can see some other other characters, and you're like, oh, you know, they have similar stars. But I think from what I've seen, um, every Yoshi that I've played, or that maybe you guys have played, um, their styles are, are different. They, they just do something tiny bit different and it, it catches you off guard you have to get you have to get used to it yeah and that's what i, I love um, about yoshi too for me personally yoshi's like the hardest uh character to get used to playing against that's why i always struggle struggle versus game ones against yoshi and i think that's kind of you know the fact that you say this makes sense uh most yoshis are like completely different than one another yeah, and, and um, it, it's such an astounding character. I, I really love that um, the, that character was built that way in, in Smash 64. Um, really builds up some hype. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, before wait, I move um, on, wait, you, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say some stuff because we haven't really discussed any of Taco's wins. Um, I think Taco's Snosa 2 performance was amazing. He beat Dexter. <clears throat> he beat Marie Gloss, And... Uh, he be well. See, he be Isaiah. So, I think. That oh, definitely not. Tacos, yeah, not a thing to miss. 
Yeah, Taco's his peak skill has kind of surpassed like everyone else besides Boom, obviously, because he's the best player right now. But if you want to compare him to like um, Hero or Z, uh, Wizard does do better versus Boom. But I think Ta- Taco's had a uh, better wins overall than Wizard. I mean, you can argue that the, the Japanese Yoshis might be a little bit better um, for Wizzy. But I think Taco's overall, his peak performances, be, uh, he double eliminated Hero at Pound. He doesn't lose to Revan. He beat Dexter. Who else did he beat? He beat the Z at G3. I think those key losses that he had might have hurt him a bit. If he didn't have those, I could see him being even higher. Yeah, I honestly thought that Tacos could be like top five. I, I genuinely thought that. I remember talking to you about it. I guess he got lo- really lower because of that, that ODS. Like, you know, kind of just fizzed out at the end of the year. But he was so strong at the beginning. It's just unfortunate for Tacos. Hopefully we see him you know, keep being strong. He, but, yeah, he will be going to... um. You should know this, Mr. Sir. I don't know what the tournament name is, but he's going to Japan, I believe. I think the viewer should know that. Yes. Okay, so uh, Tacos, Revan, and possibly me, and um, I think Preston as well. Uh, we do plan. We do have plans to go to Kansai. And... Oh, Mr. Sir, can I stop you just for a minute? Yeah. I, I see Havav Sinister in main chat. Do I move him? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, we're gonna. He's going to come in at 9.30. Okay. Okay. Uh. Anyways. Uh. So we're gonna. We do have plans to go in Kansai, and. Um. I think that's gonna be a really exciting tournament. I'm not sure if Wario will go. I I highly doubt Josuke will go. Um. But other than that, I I think it's gonna be a really good tournament. Uh, Takus has been really wanting to go to, to Japan. And I hope that really makes him better, like it did to Revan. So that'll be exciting to see. So I want to move on to the next one. Um, Wizzy at number seven with a rating of 9.09. And he's from the Florida region. He's got seventh at Genesis 3, fifth at Pound, fifth at Get On My Level, and second at Super Smash Con. So I think I go ahead. I think uh, I think Taco should be ahead of Wizzy, honestly. Yes, Taco fizzed out, but Wizzy only. I feel people are are taking that Super Smash Con thing like too heavily, but that's just that's just my opinion. I'm not I'm not sure if Warren Wu would agree, but I feel like he might be thinking the same. Or maybe yeah, I already said around. um. Sorry to cut you off, but I already said that I think that Wizard kind of got a free ride to Grand Finals. I think if Isaiah really tried, he definitely could have beat Wizard with his Pika. I think he did play Pika one game, and then he just kind of went low tier after he beat him with Pika. Um, I would put Wizzy right, you know, right before uh, Kiro. Yeah, I agree with that. Tago should definitely be higher, in my opinion. What do you what do you think, Mr. Do you think uh Wizzy deserves his spot because of Smash Con? I, I think um I did mention it. I think that Wizzy has potential to get even higher this year if he just keeps up his work ethic. Because right now it seems like he is the best Yoshi in the United States. And maybe even the world, but I don't think the world. Just just my opinion, I don't think the world quite yet. But best Yoshi on this side of the state or this side of the world, yeah, I can agree with that. If he takes a set off, off Alvin, I think that will cement cement that. And um, otherwise, I do think Taco should be above Wizzy. I mean, I, has has Wizzy faced um, uh, has Wizzy faced Isaiah? Yeah, he beat tournament? Isaiah at SmashCon. At SmashCon. Oh right, 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 yeah, yeah. He he beat them. Um. But yeah, oh, man, it's so difficult to it's talk like, about how you, Isaiah. How much do you count? Yeah, how much do you count that win? It's it's like, so amazing. that's what I'm saying. It's so difficult to talk about Isaiah, and because many people will argue, oh, you know, he's sandbagging. He went Luigi, and oh, but he won. So, 
Yeah, he Isaiah... did force dog Wizzy with Luigi, but then he ended up losing Look, the set. I Isaiah tries with his low tiers. He's just playing low tiers. Why would yeah, he, he, he tries? He Why? tries, but it's not the same as him trying with his actual main character, which everyone knows Pikachu. Right. That's just that's just a decision. I, let, let's just say that because he, I think um, Isaiah will be fourth or third, in my opinion. But we'll save that for another yeah, day. We'll save that for later. Yeah, we'll save that for uh, tomorrow. I think um, tomorrow's I wanna talk is gonna be good. Prediction. I want to make a bold prediction for Wizzy. <clears throat> I do think Wizzy will win a major tournament this year versus Boom. I just wanted to throw that out there. Why? Why do you think? No, that's that's great I, here. So why do you think that? I think Wizzy's playstyle is just very defensive, and Boom is also very defensive. Um, I think that Wizzy himself can maybe edge him out one time in a tournament. If we if we actually look at like the tournaments, Wizzy has done the best versus Boom compared to the rest of the players. Obviously not Wario because Wario beat Boom. I'm talking about the players that haven't beat Boom. I think Wizzero stands at the most chance right now. I agree. Um, Boom has said that he has he struggles with uh, Wizzy's Yoshi when he plays Pika. Uh, so that's why he's been yeah, playing think, Kirby against him. Yeah, I think we'll see. Um, I think we'll probably even see Boom play more Pika versus Wizzy because I know he's been practicing like mainly Pika. Mm-hmm. But if if Boom does pull out the Kirby versus Wizzy, I think w- Wizzy's going to be more prepared in 2017, and he might be able to take a set. Hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, bold prediction, man. I, I hope Wizzy Wizzy can improve himself in 2017. Uh, I'm going to go on to number six. We got Mariguas. Mariguas got a rating of 9.38 from the Mexico region. He mains Pikachu, and he's got G3 uh, fifth place, fourth place at Snowsa 2. Fourth place at Super Smash Con and second at Super Boom. Um, and first of all, like Mariguas is is one of the is, is one of the funniest personalities in, in this in this community. Um, and I love talking to the guy, and he's he's such a knowledgeable player. Uh, I know he speaks Spanish, so I I have that advantage. Um, but he also his English is really 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 good. Uh, so I'm really Really glad that he placed really high in 2016, especially uh, he got second at Super Boom behind behind Alvin, but beating Super Boom, uh, I mean Super Boom fans um, placement, um, and which you know is another is another thing I want to talk about that S- Super Boom fan lost the tournament that was named that was kind of named after him, Super Boomed. Um, yeah, uh, to be fair, <laughs> Alvin was the first one. I right, paid, uh, I agree. You know, got his flight paid or whatever, so it's kind of funny how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that, that's pretty funny. Uh, I want to take a look at his, his wins uh, pretty quickly. Just do... Here, Marie Gloss. What do you guys think about um, Marie Gloss being below... Below Wangara, I feel like I feel like uh, Marie Gloss should be ahead of Wangara. Um, why is that? Well, let me look at let me look at Wangara's wins and losses because right now I've only looked at Marie Gloss's. He Wangara won against Isaiah, Kiro, Dexter at G three and then losing to Boom twice. And then he wins against uh, Dexter, Kuraba, Stranded. Yeah, Super Smash Con, then losing the Z and Isaiah. Right, yeah. I definitely think Marigua should be ahead. Um, I did predict that Wangara will be ahead of him, though. So there's that. I think Marigua should be ahead because he has all the wins that Wangara has. The only thing is that Marigua lost the Tacos, while Wangara lost to Z. Those are their, their worst losses. Yeah. Um, and he did win against Alvin Marigua. at Super Boom, correct? Exactly. Yeah, I was just yeah. about to bring that up. He did. He didn't win the whole thing, but he did take a set off Alvin, sending him to losers finals. Yeah. And he was waiting in grand finals, so I, I would put Mirigas ahead of Wangara. So ranking prediction right now for next tomorrow. Um, 
I, I, I just thought about it because one gear is, you know, a Japanese player, so I thought about Wario. I think Wario will be second and Boom will get first. But I could be wrong because I feel like based on uh, some of these uh, rankings, people are really taking an account of who beats who. So they might give Wario first because Wario is the only person outside of Alvin now to, mm. you know, beat Boom. If they give it to Wario, I don't think it's that controver- controversial. I personally would put Boom as number one, just because he's attended way more. And Boom did take a set off of Wario. Not like he just got utterly destroyed. He did take a set 3-0 versus Wario in, in Grand Finals at Genesis 3. Um, so, technically, they're 2-1 in sets right now. Um, yeah, I hope Wario attends more tournaments so we can see if Boom can actually take a whole thing versus him. Alrighty, um, and with that, I want to move on to Wangara. He got a 9.42, and he made Jigglypuff, and he went to two tournaments in 2016, Genesis 3 and Super Smash Con. And Genesis 3 got third, and Super Smash Con he got fifth. Um, and you know, one thing is, he plays Jigglypuff. That's that's really, really cool to see a, a really high-level Jigglypuff placing so high at these Super Majors amongst all these um, Pikachus, Kirby's, and Falcons, and Foxes as well. Yeah, I've never seen a Puff move like Wangara. Like, when he's recovering and he does back airs to, you know, make his hurt box smaller, it's insane. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think I've seen that before. Uh, either when he, um, there's a that combo video that I think Indefa from Australia made for him, and that was a that kind of highlighted all of his combos and especially those back airs where he would space him out. That that was really smart play. I yeah. Um, sorry, you can go ahead. So yeah, no, I I thought that was really smart play. Uh, I think he'll go. A lot further in 2017 if he comes to more usa tournaments but he also has been winning a lot of the uh, japanese tournaments um especially the net play tournaments over there so he, he's he's doing really well all right um if for wangara you know you mentioned how he does well at in, in uh over there in japan i think the fact that he plays puff in j version is one of the main reasons why he's so good he doesn't rely on rest, so like his combos and his neutral game, they just have to be on point. Because if you can't get that rest, you know you need something else. That's why he's he can beat people like Hero and you know Dex. He did lose to Z, but it was really really close. Wangara is definitely someone to look out for. Oh yeah. Um, okay, guys. So I'm, I'm gonna with that. I'm gonna end it. Um, end the rankings discussion. I'm gonna introduce someone. Um, who just got into the Smash 64 scene. His, uh, his name is Zach, and he's the CEO of Evolve Gaming. And he, um, his team has recently sponsored two of our players, the 39th uh, ranked player uh, Marbles and the 45th ranked player Zentetsu. So with that, they will be able to uh, travel to more tournaments uh, and representing Evolve Gaming along the way. And I, I was... Uh, message by Zach to see if he can come on the show and I think it's wonderful that he can put a face to this his team and just explain what's what's going on and how they will be involved in the 64 community so I'm going to move him here in a second um, I think it's great that that uh, more sponsors are getting into the scene and um, especially since uh, since boom got sponsored by Panda Global here I'm gonna put him in here. Hello, Zach. How are you? Hey, Zach. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good. We got uh, we got low power here, and we got Supa. Uh, I'm Mr. Sir. You can you can call me Mr. Sir, or you can call me Andy. Either one. Um, thanks for thanks for coming onto the stream, and uh, thanks just for having me. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Thanks for sponsoring some of our players too. Of course. Yeah, exciting news. 
Um, so just uh, for a brief introduction, like explain like what um, what Evolve Gaming is all about. Of course. All right. So pretty much we are a multi-platform organization. Um, obviously, we have you know a part in Smash um, as of late. We have a CS:GO team that plays in IM ESEA Premier, um, and a Rainbow Six team actually on Xbox. Um, and that's just of, uh, as of now. Uh, obviously, we have a lot more plans coming soon. Um, hopefully, to get some melee players in here, um, poking players, and kind of go from there. Oh wow! Okay, really expanding the scene, huh? Um, of course. Uh, what made you What made you come into this massive divorce scene? So pretty much we were kind of looking to expand and, you know, all other esports. I mean, most teams are either already, you know, signed or, you know, they're not as good and they just can't compete with, you know, the big names on the market right now. So, you know, I was kind of looking for, you know, smaller scenes, not necessarily small, but, you know, more accessible, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, my CEO goes, hey, why not Smash? So I'm like, you know, I'll look into it. Um, you know, I was looking at Melee and mm -hmm. and 4, and I'm like, wait. I'm like coming across 64. I'm like, is that even like a thing still? <laughs> and yeah. I'm like going through, and I came across, uh, I think his name was Shears. And I messaged him, and I guess he is the distributor of players. Um, you know, he's like, so what are you looking for? It's kind of like I went to the store. I was just picking out players. <laughs> And um, he's like, you know, like, take a look at these players, you know, they're really good right now. So, you know, I was just going through the list. I, you know, was doing some research online and I came across um, Zantetsu and Marbles and, you know, kind of talked for a few days and, you know, now we're here. Okay. And you'll be, uh, you'll be helping. Uh, so Evolve Gaming will uh, be helping them to, to tournaments and um, can you give me just like just a brief um, kind of a, a what will you be doing for these players? Yeah, so pretty much what we do is, you know, we'll come up with jerseys um, to help, you know, spread Havav a little bit, you know, bring some, I guess, livelihood to the events. You know, when people see organizations at events, you know, it gives them a little bit more, you know, pep in their step. It's like, oh, I want to do that. You know, like I want to be that person to get picked up next. So, you know, it gets, you know, you know, the blood flowing a little bit and definitely gets, you know, more people into the scene. And, you know, the scene is going to get noticed. I can guarantee you that, you know, there's definitely gonna be a lot more action going on, you know, 2017, it's gonna be pretty crazy. So, um, you know, pretty much we help fund them for events. Um, and I mean, just overall support is, you know, what I'm trying to get at just support in every single way. Right. Um, you know, if we're not helping fund, you know, we're definitely, um, you know, I know Marbles is in Florida. I'm also in Florida myself. Oh, that um, helps. You know, so I'll be, yeah, I'll be taking, you know, <laughs> drives up to Orlando every now and then, um, you know, once a month or so to go watch play and, you know. Yeah, yeah, that definitely like helps. I said, support, so. Yeah, I mean, um, I've already seen you, you've got a, a pretty good social media, uh, Twitter presence. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's exciting to see that and, and see you guys uh, support these players. Um, you guys have gotten like a ton of, ton of followers I've seen, um, over the past few yeah, days. Yeah, actually it was crazy. Uh, yesterday, I think we hit like 65 followers in a day. I woke wow. up this morning and we had 65 plus followers. So, you know, like I said, I, like I was just, I was just actually talking to Nick in the other chat and, you know, he was like, oh, so, you know, why you, everyone's asking, you know, why are you joining you know, I said, yeah, like last night, you know, this was probably one of the most, you know, humbling and the most warm, like welcome I've ever gotten joining a community. You know, you guys are all kind of like a giant family and that's, you know, that's what we are here at Havav, you know, and we want to definitely bring that over to you guys, um, you know, and just expand the family. It, it was just the, the feedback and the support was just, you know, out of the world. So yeah, glad that to hear it. a lot. Yeah, no, after, um, so if, if you um, were digging around a little bit, uh, you know, a day before you signed them on, actually, we uh, had uh, Super Boom Fan, our number uh, one player in North America. He was recently sponsored by Panda Global, um, one of the big esports organizations that's been 
uh, sponsoring lots of players uh, um, as of yet. So it was just really exciting news just to be on the sponsor train. Um, but yeah, we definitely welcome you uh, to our family. I think um, everyone agrees that we're all a huge family when we go to these tournaments. We always have fun, uh, take pictures and everything and, and support each other. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's really great to, for you to enter the scene. Um, of course. And what do you? What are your plans like for the future? Do you plan to pick up any more um, Smash 64 players, or uh, just focus on 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 Marbles and Sentetsu for now? Um, definitely on the two for now. Um, you know, it like I said, this once it grows, like you're gonna see because how it works. Um, you know, me as an owner, obviously, seeing this it catches your eye. And, you know, I was talking to, you know, Boom the other day, um, actually a few hours before the announcement went out that he got picked up by Panda Global. And, um, you know, it's it's pretty crazy how, you know, nowadays it's like the big organizations pick up the best players. And I mean, I can see that because they can offer you the best, um, you know, and once this you know, community really gets noticed. And they're going to see that because Panda Global and, you know, Havav, and I believe you guys actually have Team Liquid is in there, Splice is in there. You know, we're all in the mix. Um, and, you know, it's definitely going to get noticed and other organizations are going to see that. And people are definitely going to start getting signed. Um, I can tell you that, you know, give it a few months, if that. And it's definitely going to, you know, really hit it off. Yeah, yeah, I, I've definitely seen that, especially with the Melee and Smash 4 scene. Um, once one guy got sponsored, it was just, you know, a few days till the next one. Yeah, um, it was like, like a domino effect. So I just want to I just wanna add in, um, I have, t I have two questions. One, do you like 64 as like a spectator sport? Two, I guess it's not really a question, it's more like you made a great investment to get involved in 64 because we're in a moment of like um, just renaissance. Like even the Panda Global guy said it. Like we're we're in a moment where this game is getting big. So you picked up just at right the right time, and we yeah. would love to like grow your community as you'd like to grow ours. You of will course, find, you will find that like all of us are so grateful for you to sponsor two of our players because this is what we've been wanting to get our players out more, get them more recognized, so we can have more tournaments, have more people, have the best at every tournament. It's just like it's just amazing for us. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, and uh, to go back to your question, um, you know, I I've never been to an event myself. Um, you know, I played it when I was a kid a little bit. I never really, you know, I knew there was a competitive scene to it. I didn't really know how big it was until uh, you know a few days ago when I really started digging into it. You know, watching, um, you know, Marvel sent me the I guess the Genesis three I recap. Um, you know, watching that, you know, it's it's just as alive, if not, you know, more lively than a Call of Duty land. You know, I've I've been to a few, you know, in New York City. I went to CSGO, um, you know, DreamHack. Um, I've been to, you know, a few others um, for Call of Duty. And, you know, it's, it's not as uh, salty of a community, I guess. You know, everyone's kind of, you know buddy buddy which is good you know there's there's competition and then there's you know the salty competition and you know that's kind of why we distance ourselves from that um in the sense that you know we no longer offer cod at havav at least right now but you know as far as a spectator you know esport you know i definitely think it's on par with all the other esports if not better um you know very entertaining to watch you know everyone gets involved everyone gets hyped about it like that's just the the energy is, you know, what I'm trying to get. The, the energy is is really there, which is, you know, what we like to see. Oh, yeah. And, and you're going to see that at, at Genesis 4 this weekend, actually. Um, we have a ton of players, a ton of international talent. Uh, so, yeah, definitely check in. Um, we'll have um, – we'll post it on Twitter. It will it'll blow up on Twitter. Uh, Genesis 4 is going to be one of the biggest tournaments for Smash. Um, yeah, so definitely check in. I think it'll be a, a great and exciting watch and yeah, for just sure. for you to check out the scene. Of course, yeah. Uh, and um, Go ahead. Super, to go back on your comments, you know, this the community is growing. And, you know, the, 
Panda Glow kind of summed it all up, and it it really is a renaissance. Like, all it takes is for a big, you know, corporate organization to come to you guys and be like, I really like what you guys are doing. I think we're going to give you, you know, so-and-so amount of money to dish out in events in return for, you know, equity back in, in the company, um, you know, in the organization of, you know, 64, um, you know, and that could be upwards of 50 to $200,000 per event, um, you know, and it might not get that big yet, but it definitely, it, it does have that potential, you know, several thousand dollars, several tens of thousands of dollars could potentially be, you know, in your hands, which is, you know, obviously that's a plus and that that's going to itself grow the community. And, you know, it's going to, it's going to rich in the community all, like a lot. Um, and it, at that point, it's going to be on par with every other esport out there. You, you said um, one, um, one interesting thing. Um, you're, you're comparing us to uh, some of the other communities. Uh, do you think that's because um, we're more of a console and not online and where we have to meet each other and that the salt is, is less? Um, you know, I think, I think in that regard, you know, obviously Call of Duty and, you know, all the other esports, they do offer like a huge online tournament base as well as LAN. Um, and, you know, I think the online play really, you know, induces rage and it really induces <laughs> salt. Yeah. Um, you know, and when you're meeting each other in person, you know, you're getting to know each other a lot better than you do behind a screen. And, you know, I think that's where your community is a lot different than others. Um, you know, when I compare it, I mean, like, how big it's going to be, you know, the prize pools. You know, you can't compare your community to anything else. You know, you're meeting in person once a week, you know, in local lands. You, you see the same people every week. You know, it's not like... The same tournament every week where you're joining their xbox live party or their you know the psn chat it's you know it's not it's not even comparable you know and obviously like human interaction is where that plays you know a huge role um you know because you get to know each other a lot better right and i think that's where friendship is really made instead of on xbox yeah um no yeah it's definitely definitely uh, easier to make friendships when when we do meet in real life um, now I just kind of want to end with a couple, couple more questions. And if Supa has any questions, he can uh, chime in. Um, sure. but what are your, what are your goals for, uh, 2017 as, as, uh, as a whole for Evolve Gaming? Oh yeah. I think you asked, asked that earlier and I just didn't get to it. Um, you know, we're hoping to pick up maybe, you know, one or two more teams, um, and definitely like dig more into smash itself. Um, you know, maybe pick up a few more Smash players, maybe an Overwatch team if, you know, if that works out. Uh, I'm actually talking to a few people at the moment. Um, you know, maybe Halo. And, you know, I think, I think once, you know, we get a little bit bigger, I'll have more of a fan base that I can, you know, expand a lot more than we are now. And I can definitely see that happening soon. All right, all right. Uh, sounds fair enough. Uh, Super, do you have any uh, questions for for Zach? Um, I can't think of any. I think you covered a lot of bases. I'm just, uh, again, really grateful that you you invested your time into 64, and you'll see that uh, it won't be any diminishing returns in that regard. Where, you, yeah, of course, you, you'll I find know. that uh, we can we can grow together. That's all I have to say about it. Really, we, we can grow together. I hope I hope you do because. There's no reason we shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited. This is going to be a good year. You know, years after, you know, we're definitely going to turn this community, you know, and make it big. So, all right, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna leave it to the chat. Um, I posted a uh, any questions for you. Um, so I'm just gonna wait maybe like one or two minutes, and if no one answers, um, I'll I'll leave it to it. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for for you to come on board. Um, and especially like, like we mentioned before, uh, the sponsor train that might be, uh, might be coming up on us soon, uh, choo choo. So, yeah, um, I'm definitely, uh, interested in that, um, in that regard. And, uh, I really wish all the best to you and, and marbles and Zantetsu, um, for 2017 and hope they, uh, 
place higher and higher in every tournament they attend. Um, I think it's going to be a great partnership. And uh, okay, so we have a uh, ES mod says hi. I think he's your graphic designer, right? Yes. Yeah, he so is he, actually. Yeah. Uh, so he, he, ES mod is one of your graphic designers. Um, yeah, those those graphics are really sick. Really looking forward to those jerseys. Um, if you guys have any uh, merchandise or or um, a store, I think you guys have a store, right? We actually do. It's actually on our. It's in our bio of uh, the Twitter page. All right, let me. So you can check that, that out. And um, hey, you know, as far as for your customs. Yes, it is. All right, I'll go ahead and link, link that. Um, yeah, you know, I, I want to talk about just a little bit more um, uh, your sponsors. Uh, you got uh, Aporia Customs, Simple Simple Jerking, and G2A. Um, do you have um, Do you have any uh, upcoming sponsors that uh, you are, you're working on? Um, at the moment, I think we're gonna you know hold it off here because with sponsors um, come contracts, and you know right. with contracts you gotta play with your GFX, then you gotta change everything on the jersey. So I think what we're gonna do. Um, potentially, I think right now, I think we're sticking with the three we have. Um, I think we might work in some, some like maybe like Razor and Meta Threads we're thinking about. Um, you know, but definitely, you know, go check out our store. Definitely use all of our, you know, discount codes. It's most of the, the codes are Havab GG for um, Simple Jerky. We have a link. For G2A, we have a link, and then Aporia, the code is HabobGG. So um, it's either 10% off or 5% off of anything in the store. Okay. All right. Yeah, guys. Yeah, definitely check out their Twitter. Uh, it is twitter.com slash HabobGG, H-A-V-O-V-G-G. I'll link it in the chat so you guys can go check them out and uh, take a look at their their sponsors. And if you want to support them, go um, go to their sponsors page and go to their store for Aporia Customs, and you can put in the code <laughs> Uh, have off GG, uh, correct? Um, and That's you guys correct. can uh, get some merchandise and help support have off. Um, so I, I just want to end the stream. Uh, you got any last words for us, Zach? Yeah, actually, I just wanted to thank, you know, Marbles and Zantetsu for, you know, coming aboard. You know, we're going to make it a good year. Definitely going to get them out to as many events as we can and that they can attend. Um, you know, we're going to try to get this community you know, to where, you know, where I see it as, you know, it's going to get a, a lot bigger. Trust me. Um, you know, we're definitely going to help expose you guys. Um, you know, I want to thank you guys for letting me on the, uh, the podcast, I guess. And, um, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, we're working really on nice it. <laughs> yeah. But thank you. It was, uh, it was yeah, great definitely. talking to you guys. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for coming on board. Uh, thank you, Supa. Thank you, Lo, for discussing the rankings. Um, uh, guys, we'll have a, we'll have another, uh, show tomorrow we'll be talking about the next set of rankings for the top four uh players of smash 64 uh one of them being uh or four of them the four left that are in everyone's minds are isaiah alvin uh, super boom fan and who am i wario. missing and wario yeah wario mm -hmm. the guy who's only been to one tournament in 2016 i think it's gonna be isaiah four alvin three Wario 2, boom 1. Uh, that's my prediction. <laughs> that's your prediction? Uh, if you guys yeah. have any predictions, um, please post them in the chat. I'll see if I can uh, tweet them out. Um, otherwise, uh, we're going to end the stream. Um, another big thanks to Zach for coming on board and talking about uh, Havalve Gaming. Um, definitely check them out. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow around 8.30 p.m. Um, there will be a couple streams. And if you guys want to check us out, we'll be here at... Uh, twitch.tv slash I'm Mr. Sir. Uh, all right, guys. 